Hello and welcome back to the Blush Studio. Today we're going to go behind the scenes of yet another painting. This will be these twin peonies right here, as well as the greenery around it. We're just going to talk through my process. So as you can see, I am filling in the sketch that I've created with my first wash. So a wash is just a light layer of paint. So it's mostly water that I'm applying on here, but it will help me to establish not only the value of, you know, the differing values. So you can see I'm adding a little bit more of the pigment at the base of those petals, just to show that there will be that shadow there. And then as well as just kind of the overall hue and the tone. So if it's like a warmer piece, the wash will be, uh, have like a warmer base or if it's something that I want to be much cooler, then it will have a more blue tone or purpley tone base. So I always add kind of a first wash, um, not only to establish those tones, but also it helps me to get a little bit more um, gutsy. It really, it helps the when I'm feeling a little bit nervous about starting a painting, especially if I have a detailed illustration like I do here, um, I usually like it and I don't wanna mess it up. So adding that wash in will help you not only to just get started um, correctly where it's you know, you're establishing the tone right away and the values but it'll also help you if you struggle with um, that little bit of extra courage. So as you can see I'm filling in a really detailed illustration I'm going in with the leaves now. Uh, I usually work with a detailed sketch underneath my paintings. Sometimes it'll be more detailed than this, sometimes it'll be less detailed, but if you uh, struggle with your drawing abilities or even just confidence in your drawing abilities I really feel like drawing is the key to painting well. So if you're struggling with your painting, the key might actually be to improve your drawing skills. So I do have a free five day challenge for improving your drawing skills and just building confidence so that when you are able to, you're able to approach each project um, confidently and knowing what to do and how to succeed. Um, so again, that is totally free and it just kind of walks you through my process through drawing you know things that I have learned um, and I'll leave that linked below. As you can see here we've skipped a couple of steps. I just lost some footage in the process and that's just what happened. So I'll be still be able to talk you through all of this. Um, as you can see I'm going through this will probably be my final pass. So a pass in painting terms is just you know, basically, if you were to pass over your paper, each time you go over it, you're adding another layer of paint. So with this pass, I'm adding the deepest shadows. So I'm actually working with two brushes. One of them is a little bit smaller, and one is a little bit bigger. On the bigger one, it's loaded with pigment, and it's this nice, deep, saturated pigment. And um, the other one is a smaller brush that is just a little bit of water on it. So it's a damp brush, and it's helping me to blend everything out. So one thing I find with watercolor, I am not a, tr you know, trained watercolor artist. This is all just stuff that I have learned and um, picked up from my husband as a painter, but also just being in the art world quite a bit and knowing how to use different media. Um, I find that I need to kind of dance my loaded brush, so the one with pigment, into the parts where I really want to load up that color. That is to prevent my brush from picking up more paint than it's putting down. So you'll see I kind of will dance in there and then with the pigmented brush and then go back in with my blending brush and just kind of smooth everything out. This helps me to get the more realistic transition. Um, kind of a more blocky style of shading is very popular right now, but it's just not the way that my brain is wired. I'm just kind of a blender. And so I found that my life works a lot better. My life goes a lot smoother if I actually just embrace that and go with it. So tapping in that color and then blending it out. So again, this is the deepest section. So I'm just going into those very um, deepest points of the flower, the very tightest folds and the parts where I really want to cast that shadow. You can see I've already done it with the lighter flower. So I'm working more in the darker flower and I'll do the same thing with the leaves here in a moment. I'm just going back, adding layer, letting it dry a little bit, adding a little bit more. Um, just to help build up that pigment to the point where it's dark enough. And then adding this fun, a bright center in. Got a little bit too dark, so I deepened it up with some brown just to help desaturate everything. Now for the greenery itself, um, you can see I went really dark with the smaller greenery towards the top of the paper. And I also want to go a little bit darker with this greenery here. So I have the lighter greenery that that's really large in the background and because that's lighter it will automatically fade to the back. So I'm just going to be layering this on and adding more pigment as I go. 
just so you know as a side note this has been sped up I do not paint this fast if you um, you know if you're trying to mimic something like this and you think that you need to keep up with me I am not painting this fast so don't try and paint this fast <laughs> Go nice and slow. This is about twice as fast as I normally work, and some sections in this video have been four times as fast. Um, but I don't think that's until I'm actually inking the piece. So another thing that I've talked about a couple of times in my videos is you know using depth and color and value to your advantage. So all these leaves are going to be darker than the light green large leaves behind them, but the ones that I want to come most to the front, so closest, they grab your attention first, I want to make them a little bit darker. Does that make sense? So if I want it to come up to my face, I want it to be darker. That's just aerial perspective, like if you look at a picture of mountains, how they'll slowly, they'll look like they're fading into the background. Um, that's kind of what I'm going for here. So it's not the only way to show depth. In fact, um, if you're working with shadows, it's the opposite. But for my illustrations, I generally work with aerial perspective. And in order to enhance that, so I'll darken up this, I'll deepen this leaf and this one so that it separates it a little bit from the leaves that are behind it and just helps them to move forward visually. And that's my hair. So I try to zone out when I'm painting and filming so that I'm able to just relax and be a little bit more natural. Um, but sometimes that means that my hair gets in the way. Or once my whole head was in the way of the painting and I missed out on that filming opportunity. But you know what? That's how it goes. And um, there's always next time. So again, tapping the brush in just to lay that pigment down and then I smooth it out. So if you have a tip for laying pigment down that doesn't pick it up off of the paper, I would love to hear it and to practice it and share it with um, those of you in my who watch my next video. So adding some fun texture to these leaves, I just thought it would be fun to add a little bit of some color variations and some depth just to add some visual interest. Keeping it very light because again, this leaf is more in the background than those darker green leaves. So I don't want to add too much detail because that will draw attention to it. And then the viewer's eye won't know where to go first. You really want to dictate where they are going um, and what is most important. With these little white flowers, um, because they are white, I'm going to be focusing on the shadow. So I'm going to go two or three passes for this, just generally dictating the shape of the, sorry about that hair, um, showing the shape of the petal itself by just adding in those little shadows and then I'll go in with a deeper shadow in a moment. Now, I mentioned this before in my portrait um, watercolor video, but I do like to use a color that is already in the painting for my shadows. So in this case I drew on the color of the darker peony as well as some of the green. I used that to mix more of a medium gray tone and then added that in with the rest of it. So it's a little bit more of a cool tone purpley base because of that peony, but I desaturated it with the green, which is the complement of the leaves. So I pulled colors from this actual painting, um, elsewhere in the painting in order to create this section. And then as you know, I like to illustrate or to outline my illustrations with ink just to help it to pop and I did that for this whole series. So here is the finished painting. If you want to see this or the other items in my calendar you can check out my website and I'll leave that link below. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed it and until next time happy drawing.